So this is our autochrome collection. And autochromes are this really cool, early, early color photo process from the 1920s and the 19 teens. And we have one of the largest collections in the world. The National Geographic Society was founded in 1888 to raise geography awareness. The Society published a magazine that funded exploration and expeditions all around the globe. In the early years, the magazine shared mesmerizing photos of these expeditions in black and white. Then came color photography and eventually moving pictures, or film. There are now close to 12 million objects in the National Geographic Society archives, including almost 8 million images, most of which have never been seen by the public. This is our black and white unpublished collection, which is close to half a million unpublished images, but no one's really actually fully counted them. Sarah Manko is senior archivist in charge of the historical photos collection at National Geographic headquarters in Washington, D.C. She needs technology to take this valuable collection sitting on the shelves and transform it into shareable, high-definition digital files. The ultimate goal is to digitize everything in the collection, which will probably end up taking us 10 years. Our film collection is very unique. It dates back to 1901 and contains a lot of footage that was shot during our grant expeditions, magazine assignments, and we have edited films that were presented to members of the society at lectures. Karen Serka is director of the Film and Audiovisual Archive at National Geographic. This is our film vault and it's a climate controlled storage room that is kept at 40 degrees Fahrenheit and 38% relative humidity. And we have about 40,000 assets in this vault and only about 16% of our collection has been digitized. It's critical that we keep it here in this vault because the temperature and humidity will help uh, preserve the film. If it's not stored in the proper conditions, film will start to degrade. It'll develop um, what's called vinegar syndrome. It starts to degrade and emit a vinegar odor. And similarly with video assets, they will also start to degrade if they are not stored in the proper conditions. With the equipment today, we can have our film scanned at the highest resolution possible for preservation. And so we went from having tape transfers of the film that were not very good quality to now having almost crystal clear digital scans of our film. And it is just, it's amazing. This is brand new digitizing equipment that we have here, which is a phase one camera that has 100 megapixels to it. One of the main reasons we're digitizing this collection is for preservation purposes. And preservation is not just preserving the original, which is really important, but it's also creating a digital surrogate. This image over time will degrade because all images fade or fall into oblivion at some point. And by having a digital copy, we will have a digital version of that image for a much longer period than the actual physical image will be around. So I'm going to digitize this image, placing it on the table here. And here's my photograph. Throughout the process of having a lot of our film scanned and digitized, we wanted to be able to share it with people. We created our film preservation blog in order to highlight some of the historic films we had in our collection. For the anniversary of the Apollo 11 moon landing, we recently found footage of the Apollo 11 astronauts being awarded our special Hubbard Medal for their mission. As soon as we post it, anyone in the world is able to view this footage that we are seeing and hopefully share the same emotions that we had when we saw this footage for the first time. Using the latest technology to digitize and store photos, maps, and film footage and make this archive available to everyone is critical to fulfilling the National Geographic's mission to drive innovation and inspire people to place greater value on the natural world and its people. No other institution has materials such as these. And so I feel a huge responsibility 
to take care of these materials, preserve them for the future, digitize them, and, and make them accessible to the public because they really won't be doing anyone any good just sitting in our, in our vault.